It's Madden NFL 23, and it's presented by EA Sports. It's the Los Angeles Chargers and the Baltimore Ravens coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the NFL on this fine afternoon brings us to historic Baltimore, Maryland at M&T Bank Stadium. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the Los Angeles Chargers and the Baltimore Ravens. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. T-Bank Stadium. Fields it right around the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. The Ravens offense going to work, and as usual, it's Lamar Jackson, the former MVP of the league, at the helm. Early part of his career, defense has really had to focus on his running ability, and they still do. But now, he's turned himself into a true dual-threat quarterback. When he plants his cleats in the ground and turns it loose, Good things happen downfield. Jackson looking to throw right away. And that'll be complete to Dobbins. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. Three yards remain for second down. The play fake to Dobbins. Here's Jackson. And that one incomplete, but now a penalty flag coming in late. That might be P.I. A little too aggressive defensively, and the flag comes out. And no one trying to cover is going to like a call going against them, but you have to like the effort there. Went for the interception, just unable to get it, and the flag did come out. Here's Jackson. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. To throw again on second down. Jackson. A rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked up by J.C. Jackson. And the Chargers are going to get possession here as they force the opening drive turnover. Not something you see very often from a quarterback of his caliber, an opening drive interception. Oh, there's no doubt in my mind that even he's surprised at how that one played out. But we know this guy is not going to stop him from continuing to fire as this game goes along. Probably give a little nod of respect across the field for that one and let him know he'll be back the very next series. Here are the Chargers ready to go on offense, led by their first-round pick in 2020. The man out of Oregon, Justin Herbert. It hasn't taken Herbert long to earn the status as one of the league's best and most entertaining passers. He's locked and loaded on every snap. In the second he sees an opening, the ball soaring downfield. You've got to be on your A game at all times against him. The second you slip up, he's liable to burn you. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10, right at the 50-yard line. Herbert will give this one to Eckler. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. And this guy could be everywhere. Kyle Hamilton getting there to drop it for a loss. Have to give credit for a nice play there, but also have to look at it as a blown assignment. He became a free runner that turned into a free hitter. 
First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Once more, here's Eckler. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but half of the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. Going to throw on third down with Herbert. Finds the open man. It's Mike Williams. And he is going to have the Chargers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, Charles, it's early, but that's a key third down conversion. Remember, they forced the turnover on the opening drive. Now they're in a position where they look like they'll at least get three out of this. A great example of complimentary football if they're able to cash this in, isn't it, partner? Because defense does this job, takes it away, turns over the offense. He'll just pick up a nice first down there. Maybe it's time to think about taking a shot at the end zone because it looks like the field goal is almost assured. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Here's Herbert. He'll get this out wide to Eckler. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. They'll try to pick up the first with Eckler. He's going to pick up the first down and then so. And he's in for a Charger touchdown. 31 yards for Austin Eckler. And the Chargers are on the board first on the road here in Baltimore. So defensively, third down, you're thinking, get the stop, maybe force the field goal try. Instead, he's able to shoot free and not just get the first down, but get the touchdown as well. Yeah, so much for the best laid plans, right? And you knew once he got past the line of scrimmage, he was gone. Got the head of steam behind him, boom, off to the races. The only surprise would have been if anyone caught him. The extra point splits the uprights, and it's now a 7-0 game. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. From his end zone, here comes Justice Hill. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. They threw an interception the first time they had the football. Wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in. Everyone has matchups that they like better than others where they think they have an advantage. Dial up some of those plays. Try and go to those spots and get your offense moving. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though. Huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. It kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. Second quarter now from Baltimore. It's the Ravens in possession as they've got it with a second and 14 upcoming. Throwing is Jackson. I'm not sure he saw the linebacker there as that's batted down and incomplete. They've given him some different looks here defensively in the early going. He's only hit two of his first five passes. With a big third down coming up, he's hoping he's got a play dialed up that can take advantage of whatever the defense throws at him. That ball caught. It's Mark Andrews, the tight end. Able to convert on third and 14. A terrific play call. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds it for the first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They go play action with Jackson. Yet again, targeting and fighting Mark Andrews. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", 6'5", and up. 
A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. I know we're just in the second quarter and there's a ways to go in this game, but that's a second drop. I'm wondering if that's a little bit of an alarm bell for them when they start calling plays on the offensive side of the ball. His eyes already looking upfield on that last one before he brought it in. Off the play fake. Here's Jackson. Complete to Lankley. But he's brought down in the red zone at the 18 after a gain of 18. First and 10. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive. But here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw to the end zone, but it's incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. Jackson will throw again. That is caught. It's Bateman for a Raven touchdown. Rashad Bateman, an 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Ravens are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. Bouncing back nicely from that bad opening drive where he threw the interception. Drive number two leads him right down the field and into the end zone. So obviously his confidence was never lost, and that's a good thing to see. Great quality to have. You absolutely must maintain that as a quarterback. But I have to think that they're probably still on the script that they prepared for this game. Just a second drive. They've worked on these plays all the week in practice. Seven now as they kick it away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Chargers get set to go here for their second drive. Well, as the offense begins another drive here, a pretty simple, Charles. They want to carbon copy what happened the last time out when they ended their drive in the end zone. You're right about that, partner. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Just score again, but we know it's not that simple because... We don't just make adjustments at halftime if you're a good football team. You spend that time on the sideline, you study what's on the notes and the tablets, and you make those adjustments to prevent a repeat of the last drive. Series to series, the best teams, that's how they get it done. And we'll find out here soon enough whether those adjustments are enough defensively. Here's Herbert. And this is caught. First catch for Keenan Allen. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. Herbert with a connection to Allen for a Charger first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. There he goes, right side. Touchdown, L.A. Josh Palmer, 62 yards. And the Chargers have moved out in front. Well, that's a heck of a response to regain the lead after we had seen the touchdown to tie the game. I would say what we just saw there was a great amount of poise because typically when teams tie the game up, it's a little bit of a, how would you say, you kind of kind of take a step back and have to get yourself regrouped. They regrouped in a hurry, didn't they? They attacked back after they'd been tied. And in a big way, that was a statement long touchdown. Extra point right down the middle, and that makes the score 14-7. to the kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Taken at the goal line. 
And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, and this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. To throw again on second down. Jackson, and an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. That's a play that'll likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And a points result, we'll call this play significant. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. Chewing up big yardage, another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Final play of the half here, it's Jackson. Right back to Duvernay, that's complete. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. So we have reached halftime intermission with the visiting Chargers on top as we'll get you down the coast to Orlando. All right, so we skip the rest of halftime and get set for the third quarter. And we welcome you back now alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn getting set for quarter number three here. So the Chargers will start the second half with the lead and the football as we're underway in the third quarter. And no run back here as the third quarter will commence with a touchback. Out comes the Chargers as they'll go on offense now to start this third quarter. So for this offense, Charles, remember drive one made it to the end zone. Drive two resulted in the touchdown as well. Now they'll try to make it three for three. Yeah, and you know, they told us all week that this was the plan and this is what they wanted to execute, but did they really believe it would happen this well, this efficiently? I know they'll take it, and afterwards they'll say, there's never a doubt in our minds we were going to be successful in this one. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and that'll make it second down. Well, there was nothing open down the field, so give him credit for his patience and not forcing it. Showed a lot of confidence in his big man to just swing it out to the fullback. And they got some good yardage out of it. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. On first and ten, Herbert. And this caught left side by the tight end Parham. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Throwing again on second down. Herbert, he'll get this to Eckler. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. And at his size, he's a small back. He can get him the football. He can try to get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of there where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. And a lot of times, these plays, they either go for nothing or they go for big yardage and hear him. They got to the outside, turned it upfield, and ended up getting a nice little gain out of it. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. And the Ravens are going to take possession here at their own 16-yard line. So it was a drive that had real promise here to begin the third quarter, but ultimately derailed by the INT. And that was the position you wanted to be in, coming out to start this third quarter, get a nice drive going, looking for the end zone. Possibly got a little bit too greedy right there. 
The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. And they just got a little help from their defense forcing the turnover. Now can they make that pay off in points? They need to, partner. They're down on the scoreboard. Need to take advantage of those opportunities. And this is a good one right in front of them. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and ten. Play action. It's Jackson. And this is into the hands of Andrews downfield. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. 26 big yards on that one. It's another first down. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. So from Charger territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 32-yard line. Jackson now. That's into the hands of Prochet. And they'll work this down inside the 30. Three quarters in the books. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Baltimore. It's the Ravens with possession of the football, but trailing on the big board as we get set for the fourth. Play action. Now Jackson. And this is going to be pulled in by the tight end Andrews. A good pick up there at 22. The design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. And Jackson throwing once more. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked up by J.C. Jackson. And the Chargers are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. So a good drive with a bad ending, Charles. They move it down the field well. Cannot finish it off, though, as it's intercepted in the end zone. Deflating, that has got to be the word here because they were sharp in moving it down the field, but sometimes you start thinking like a touchdown is a given, and it doesn't always work out that way as we saw there. After the turnover, here's Herbert. And this is caught right along the sideline. What a job of keeping the toes in bounds there. Give them 32 on the play. Herbert now. He'll get this over the middle here to Palmer. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys a place like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive, it just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in the bunch. I mean, we talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. That's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. First down, and they stick with Eckler. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it. And it's second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front. Because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. After that run, still a good amount of meat on the bone here for this third down play. Can you envision them putting this in the air? Totally. I mean, look at who he has under center right now. If you can't trust him with the football, you can't trust anyone. And frankly to me, I want the ball down the stretch. Get the first down. Keep it in the hands of the offense. I don't want to turn it over to Decision here on fourth and a yard. Kind of a 
strange ball game, Charles. We did not have a single point by either team after half. A really a defensive clinic by both sides in half number two. And wasn't that just beautiful to watch? Come on, man. Come over to the dark side with me. Wasn't that fun to see these defenses holding sway, right? Making sure they're controlling the game in the second half. It lets you know that you've got to score points when you can. You never know when offenses might go a little bit dry and you need those points from earlier.